Okay, you ready? Yeah. Okay. Hi, this is Dr. Hudson, and today we will be talking with Kira. Kira is a freshman at Harvard University, and she is also a former Dodd student. So welcome, Kira. We're so happy to have you. Thank you for taking time to talk with us today. No problem. Great. So if you would start by telling us a little bit about yourself, the school that you attended, and what your current concentration is at Harvard University. <laughs> um, I went to Hohenfels Middle High School in Germany. And about myself, I'm nerdy. I like to read a lot, although I don't have any free time to read. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, I, re I really enjoy studying, um, which makes Harvard a good fit for me. Yeah, <laughs> good. School work is what I do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm currently, we don't declare our concentrations until sophomore year, but I'm planning on concentrating in linguistics. Oh, awesome. Okay. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what got you to Harvard. Um, what courses did you take in high school that prepared you the most? Um, I think the two courses that really prepared me the most were AP Calculus AB and AP Stats. Um, because they really like my teacher really worked to follow um like something along the lines of what college would be which was very painful but at the same time like the information in those were was also extremely useful highly recommend ap stats it's painful but you need statistics to understand a lot of other subjects okay um as far as like the rigor and the pace of the class of your ap course compared to your regular courses um, do you feel it was faster or the same? Um, it was a lot faster and more in depth. Um, my regular classes didn't really like cover a whole lot in depth. It was more of like a, a surface level, like, you know, this is, this is a broad concept mm -hmm. and this is what it might be used for, but AP definitely goes more in depth and there's a lot more work involved with that. Um, so definitely don't overload on APs, but they're useful. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, so, and that kind of went into my next question. Do you think loading up on AP courses helps? Do you think kids should do that? Um, I think it helps to an extent, um, It, but don't take more than you can do well in. Um, like, you don't want to take all seven AP classes just to have AP on your transcript if we're going to get C's and D's in all of them. Um, like that, that doesn't help you at all. Mm -hmm. So I, the most I did at one point was four, and that was definitely enough for me. I know some people can do more. One of my friends has done six every wow. year for I think two or three years now. He's a senior in high school in um, Kaiserslautern, but he <laughs> definitely has better study skills than I do. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a, that would be a bit above the norm, I would say. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, were you involved in any clubs or groups or organizations when you were in high school? Yes. I was very heavily involved in student council. Um, starting in my sophomore year, I was on the executive board as secretary. Then junior year, I was vice president and senior year president. Um, so that was my main extracurricular um, because it once you get to like vice president and president, it takes a lot of time. Um, I participated in honor society, um, but not too as much, like not as much, because our chapter wasn't incredibly active until my senior year. But by then, it was a really small chapter, so it was sort of hard to do anything um, much with it. Um, other than that, I did academic games, but that that's sort of a moot point now because they canceled it. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. All right. Um... Describe your application process. Like, when did you start? Was Harvard the only school that you applied to? Walk us through that. Oh, no. Um, my application process was a bit complicated. Um, I had known that I wanted to at least apply to Harvard since I was, like, 10. So, <laughs> but I was realistic. I knew it should not be the only school I applied to because there's a very small chance of getting in. Um, and I am the first person from my school to ever get into any Ivy League school. So I well, applied congratulations. to... congratulations. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> I applied to nine schools, um, 
all the way from like state universities like um university of new mexico and indiana university to um harvard and mit um the only overseas school i applied to was the university of edinburgh um which that was an interesting process in itself but um not not very relevant here (laughs) (laughs) i started my applications the first one i did in august um because my mom was trying to be responsible and make me do them early so I wouldn't stress about them at the deadlines but I I was not as responsible as she hoped (laughs) so I I was still finishing them up till the I applied to MIT in the early decision round Um, well they don't do early decision I forget what they call theirs Um, early action um, no maybe just early decision and not early action they Mm. they call it something different because it's not binding okay Um, but I got deferred from that and later rejected, which was painful, but <laughs> it worked out for the best. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, Harvard and the rest of the schools I applied to, I applied uh, regular, so I was submitting those right before the January 1st deadline, um, <laughs> in part because um, it was rather difficult to get all my teachers to submit their recommendations, because um, I gave them plenty of notice, but um, they're also very busy people, and um, there were there was one teacher that I was emailing just about to the deadline, like, please, please just submit it. Yes. <laughs> I'm counting on this. It's the Common App. It has four school applications on it. Mm-hmm. Um, so definitely, definitely start early on teacher recommendations. Very and, good uh, advice. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, and then the, the decisions came out in March. Um, the IVs are a little, it's painful um, because they all released their um, admission decisions on March 31st, or at least they did for my year. It's always like the last couple of days of March. Mm-hmm. And, um, so by then I've had all of my other decisions. Um, and it, it was definitely fairly nerve wracking. I was convinced I wouldn't get into Harvard. I was like, well, I was rejected from MIT and like, I just, I don't see it happening. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Why would I be more qualified for Harvard? But I ended up getting put on the wait list, which is another very interesting story, how the wait list is handled, mm-hmm. um, which totally depends on the school. Um, I was also waitlisted at Wellesley, but they had this clause that, like, you had to agree that if they um, accepted you off the wait list, you would definitely go to Wellesley. Okay. Um, and I, I don't know, I didn't like the tone of their decision, so I... I turned that one down, um, and then I got waitlisted at Harvard, and I was like, well, why wouldn't I stay here? Like, that would be fantastic. Right? <laughs> and lo and behold, it happened in the middle of my, in the middle of May. No, it was early May, because I was still taking AP tests, and <laughs> that was hectic yes. in itself, doing, um, trying to figure out what college you're going to after you've already said, yes, I'm going to a different school and um, starting the paperwork at another university, in my case, Vassar. Mm -hmm. And so May was interesting, but um, I think it, it, I definitely like where I am. Harvard is definitely good academically. (laughs) Awesome, that's great. Um, In hindsight, do you think your course load in high school helped your uh, chances of getting into Harvard? I think it definitely did um, because Every year I took some courses outside my high school because we had very small offerings. Um, like my, the total school grade seven through 12 was only about 240 students. Mm-hmm. And my grade alone was the biggest they'd had in a decade and was 53 students. Whoa. <laughs> so <laughs> it was like um, my freshman year, I took three courses online um, to give me like um, a way to take AP in my sophomore year because my school had a policy that you couldn't take them before junior year. Mm -hmm. Um, So I took the prerequisites um, my freshman year online uh, and then ended up doing a couple AP classes my sophomore year, uh, which I definitely um, am glad that I did. Um, I think the earlier you start, the better because a lot of kids in the States will do AP all four years. Um, And those are the kind of kids that are applying to like Ivy League colleges. So it's, um, it's sort of hard to say, well, you know, my my school just didn't do that. (laughs) 
So I mean, there are some people here who definitely just, they didn't take that many AP courses, but um, they come from schools that have already been like thoroughly, like have a lot of Harvard students come from them. Um, so it's, it's harder coming from a Dodd school, I think, because there aren't many of us who go to Ivy League schools, just because, you know, there, there aren't many of us in general. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's really the main thing about my courses was that I was glad I took some online and then did extra APs. I took 10 total. Okay. So. All right. Um, so at Harvard, what has your freshman year been like? Um, it, it's going to sound bad, but it's stressful, um, <laughs> just because it's, well, my dad retired and my, from the Air Force, and my family moved right before the school year started, so I was dealing with, like, you know, moving and going to college at the same time, as well as my dad's retirement, and right. not being in the military community anymore, which is a lot at one time, mm -hmm. and, um, so... Plus, I, my first semester, I was in a pretty bad rooming situation because those things can happen sometimes. So, oh, yes. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so I was one of the several people who moved at semester. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, the, but it's also, it's actually, there are a lot of fun times on campus because um, there's always something to do. Um, sometimes to the point that you're like, can't you schedule these things further apart? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who made this schedule? This is terrible. Too much fun. <laughs> exactly. Or um, at Harvard, we have um, reading period, which is like our classes end, and then we have like a seven or eight day period to study before final exams start. Oh, uh -huh. um, so for some reason, everyone schedules everything during reading period. So there'll be like five really good events back to back on one day. And you're like, who made this up? Right. This is terrible. <laughs> like, I can't go to all your things and still study. Right. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, honestly, I think the, the biggest thing to get used to at Harvard um, was definitely, um, like, living with other people because it's, you know, it's one thing to, like, you know, live with your parents and siblings, but... It's another thing entirely to be sort of tossed into a room with a couple of strangers and be like, hey, get along. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I know a lot of situations where people have had amazing roommates and like hit it off from the first day. And there are also times that like people get along well until about the end of the first semester. And then everyone's like, I'm really sick of you right now. <laughs> <laughs> we have spent way too many weeks together. Right? <laughs> So it's, it's sort of luck of the draw to some extent. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot that goes into college that people don't think about in high school. I know that was the case for me. Like, will I have access to a kitchen? Um, like, what kinds of food are available in the area? Because, like, I can't find German food anywhere. And <laughs> right. so occasionally I'll, like, um, my parents happen to live in Massachusetts now. So, like, occasionally I'll go back home and be like, we need to eat some German food, like, mm -hmm. today. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because uh, I can't get it anywhere near campus. So, th yeah, there's just some things like, and how much laundry costs that, like, you don't think about before you get to campus and you're like, oh, crap. Absolutely. I of this. <laughs> it's actually really obvious now that I think about it. But right? before you get there, you're like, why would I want to know how much laundry costs? Mm -hmm. So. Okay. So. Um, is there any advice that you would give um, a high school student, like maybe something that you wish that you knew then that you know now? Um, I think really most of it comes down to like studying what you want to in high school to like while also considering, you know, like what makes you sort of competitive. So like for me, I had the option to take um, like some CAD classes um, that now I'm, you know, uh, it's one of those that like, it, you don't think of it at the time, but then, you know, you get to a college class and they're like, we're going to practice writing a resume in a foreign language. And you're like, well, this is spectacular. I don't have anything. I'm a freshman. Uh, you can be like, oh yeah, look, I have, I have used, you know, whatever program for three years now. Right. Um, and I mean, there's a lot of stuff that, like, you know, take APs, but it's, it's not the end-all and be-all of college admissions. Um, 
like there are a lot of things that like that I think courses that I chose that weren't APs but still were competitive so like I took technical writing and creative writing women's literature um like a critical thinking writing class so like there's a lot of stuff you can do that looks really good on your resume or you know your college application without actually being like an AP certified class absolutely um, which you know you don't really think about it at the time you're just like oh my gosh APs <laughs> like oh I'm not going to be competitive if I don't have 27 of them but <laughs> <laughs> you can definitely be competitive in other ways and I think leadership positions do that as well yes um like I don't know how many people there are at Harvard who didn't do student council at one point or another. Um, just pretty much all of us did it um, at one point or, the, or another in high school. Um, because, I mean, I, I don't know. Some of them did it just because, you know, resume. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. there are a lot of other people who you, you can tell that they just like, this, that's just who they are. Okay. And you know, it's, you want to show your personality. It doesn't matter what school you're applying to. Um, if they, you know, you don't want them to accept you for someone you're not. So. Right. Because then it's four years of living up to that, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, are, do you have any um, parting words or anything that you'd like to share? Um, I guess just like, um take the idea of college seriously but like don't let it freak you out <laughs> because um when i you know the, when i was getting to campus i was like oh, what on earth have i done to myself like how am i going to survive harvard i came out of a tiny school and i know no one here um like why did i make this decision it makes no sense um but you know once you get in the groove of things and start making friends it's um, sort of almost like any other PCS really um, yeah. it's you know you learn how to you know do what you need to in your new environment and <laughs> the military kids I know here are actually some of the best equipped to like cope with um, the transition to Harvard because I think you know to an extent we're all like yeah <laughs> yeah it's just another move <laughs> survive and soar right yep <laughs> awesome awesome well, thank you so much for your time, and Thanks. Um, congratulations, and I wish you all the best. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Have a...